When these images light up upon a TV screen, they quickly grab your attention. This is because, in a certain context, you take them to be real. If shot in a recognizable location, like this major financial center, they are quickly broadcast all over the world. They become valuable commodities right away. TV stations want them, the authorities want them, and the participants feel that they have now become part of history. They are also an easy way to start a film. That feeling of not being at home in the city, yet at the same time, you know, that's where you live, that's where you come from. And in a sense, also wanting to celebrate the potential of the city, because I think cities are amazing and they're being destroyed. Protest is going to get bigger. The car culture is growing constantly. This is just the first stage. After five days and nights, the party is drawing to a close. What was regarded as one of Britain's unspoiled beauty spots. Police have been criticised for keeping a low profile. There have been indications of how uh, these people on the site, drug dealers and criminals, indications of how they would treat police officers. <laughs> This, for example, uh, is a sy syringe and some other uh, item which was thrown into our garden and collected from the hedge uh, on the Saturday night when we were totally besieged and surrounded. The vast majority of the 100,000 marchers did not see these scenes, but of course, these are what made the news. <laughs> This is when Reclaim the Streets was formed, during one of the biggest anti-road campaigns of the decade. Dozens of the anti-road campaigners who fought every inch of the new road through East London are tonight barricaded into a row of houses at Leytonstone. Emotions were running high, as they have been every inch of the way of this controversial road construction. I was already living in a squat along the route of the uh, proposed motorway link road. I hadn't really thought much to it, you know, squatting's always a bit unstable. The interior space could be exterior, so suddenly all the sofas and the beds and the baths, everything came out onto the street. All the art had a function, everything 
was there as a form of defence. Some people from the Twyford Down Road protest came along and suggested that we do something about it, basically, and got us involved in direct action. The sculptures were aesthetic, but they were also pragmatic. They were barricades. <laughs> It's against pollution, it's against hurrying from one place to the next in a little bubble, in a little shell of a car that's not connected to anything else, that's isolating and alienating and polluting. And it's against the system that involves people going from A to B in a hurry every day at the beginning of work and at the end of work, and the fact that they're going to work. First, we were scared that we just wouldn't get the numbers of people to make it work. About 100 people turn up. Meanwhile, others are waiting in Camden High Street, ready to stop the traffic with two second-hand cars bought for the occasion. As the tube arrived in Camden, two cars that we bought were crashed in the high street, and then everybody piled in and... Um, trashed the cars, basically, so that they couldn't be moved away. We chose Camden because at weekend it's Camden Market, so there's loads of people there, loads of pedestrians, but at the same time there's so much traffic, so many cars, that it's almost impossible to cross the road sometimes. I want to get rid of the car, but I'd like to get rid of money so I don't have to work using the car. I'd like to abolish capitalism. We do question the car, but we use it as a launching pad to question the whole systematic imposition of a particular way of travelling that benefits the few, benefits large multinational corporations, oil companies, those who are selling this, this idea of travel. It turns a street into a road which you can oppose the street to the road. The street can be much more about community, about social interaction, about relating to other people, about these sort of, these chance encounters and, and so on that can happen in a real street. The road is 
a means from getting to A to B, that's it. You, there's, there's nothing else going on. The idea that the car gives you freedom, well, what is that freedom? What type of freedom is that? You have to question this freedom that's being sold. For the next party, RTS prepares more sophisticated tactics to block the road. On your marks, get set, go! The tripod, imported from Australia, is a perfect example of the philosophy behind non-violent direct action. The only way to dismount it is to bring down the person on top, which would be very dangerous. That was 1 minute 37 seconds. It's not too bad. It's better in training. One minute, it was just uh, an ordinary street and the cars are going past and everybody's going about their ordinary business sort of thing. But there's a few of us hanging around on the corner sort of feeling a bit nervous and knowing that something is, is about to happen. I mean, you can't quite believe that you really intend to stop the traffic on this street because, it, you know, you haven't asked anybody's permission. And then, bam, like that, in a, a few seconds or minutes, the whole scene's transformed. Start letting the stuff out there. Yeah. to different people and that utopian dimension excites lots and lots of people but for very different reasons and I see that as an enormous strength to find political forms which enable people to act collectively without presupposing a detailed agreement on you know policies and programs and ideologies. What do you think the police do when they take all these Parties have potential to get a lot of people organised and involved in doing direct action. And it's party as well, and everyone likes party. Thank 
camera. Let go of your camera and I will hold it. There we go. It was six months of planning by irregular meetings by a small group of people. We had invited people to meet at Liverpool Street Station. This was because it was a mainline station, and also because four separate tube lines passed through it. As far as the police were concerned, we could have been going off in any direction. And being such an important station, the police would have been unlikely to have closed it down. The action was overplanned, because what turned out on the day to work best was the, the kind of crowd spontaneity. Very few people knew exactly where the destination was. On the central line, every third train arrives on the platform empty. It was important to occupy this train first and to get as many people as possible to Shepherd's Bush. Oh, it was incredible. Everyone was helping everybody else carry everything, and then they turned the escalators off, and we just we, sort of, we just knew something just terrible had happened. The police had already blocked the way to the M41. There were now two options, a party in Shepherd's Bush, a major intersection, or one on the motorway. I don't want to have a party here, it was terrible, and it's fucked, it's fucked, it's fucking fucked, it was awful. The street was empty of cars, there was no more traffic going in, and, uh, and it was a bit desperate for a while, well we've stopped the traffic, but where is everybody? The police had closed stations near the motorway, but people got off elsewhere. And then I got a phone call saying, the tripods are up, the tripods are up. I was like, fucking running and running and running. One minute thinking that I was, you know, I was going to be arrested. The whole thing was a disaster. So the next minute, standing on top of the sound system truck, and the music starting up, and just this huge crowd of people coming up the road.
had some uh, uh, communication from the organisers, we could have actually probably arranged a, a few streets for them today, which we traditionally do with street parties anywhere in London. And I don't see it as a protest. It isn't a protest against anything. It's a celebration of uh, the potential of freedom, of diversity, of an ecological society, a free society. It's not a protest against the car. It uses it as a symbol. This motorway here today that's uh, been blocked, we can actually put a traffic plan around it without too much inconvenience. So from my point of view, uh, this, is, uh, this is a fine location if it's got to take place. You're not allowed to have your entertainment spontaneously self-directed, self-organised in the street. Until now, how would you uh, describe the way it's gone? It's gone as we planned, so I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Well, I, ca I can't say if there is a political decision being taken higher up from what we are, from the material that we're given, and obviously from what we hear from protesters as well. We know that the, the level of surveillance is huge. There are tactical decisions made beforehand. They have ration debriefings and briefings. So it's treated as, a, as an operation that the operation will be given a name. anyone who put anything on or was involved in any way was arrested. Legal observers were arrested.
Well, the initial reason was because the company, Mesidoc and Arbor Company, tried to impose an agreement, an overtime agreement that was previously negotiated. You get paid in two hour blocks. On this day, they said you're only getting paid one hour. The men never had it. The men got sacked because they wouldn't have it. They put a picket line up. The rest of the dockers on the picket line and the rest is history. They asked us to get involved. We were willing to do so because uh, it, it was important to make clear the social roots of the environmental crisis. Whereby we, if we decide to support our brothers and sisters in any given industry, then we must reserve our rights and we should never, never cross a picket line. different scale but we were on different issues but we all got together tremendous weekend and, and you know the way it worked out for us it was like the first and the best one of the best actions that have been taken when we occupied the roof i actually got on the roof and they brought a side to us that we needed to know how to get in there what do we do the practical side of it and we're learning all the time still. But before that, we'd done like several small occupations ourselves of little officers and shipping officers. So we had the idea as well of doing something. message across and it's getting a message of unity as well that people can be together that's what it means to me it means a lot The dockers, still on the picket line, call for a march for social justice at the end of a general election campaign that's being ignored by everyone except the media. Reclaim the streets. Never mind the reclaim the streets. Don't walk on my
we took the 20,000 copies of Reading Stands from the printing press down to St James's Piccadilly. It was a central distribution point. People were going to turn up there and then go off to distribute bundles of them at tube stations, railway stations. Who would you vote? I mean, so who do you believe, would you believe anyone that says anything in politics? We've got to fucking leg it, man. so unexpectedly. Well, we sort of felt that um, nobody gives a toss about mainstream parliamentary politics because it excludes absolutely everybody. I agree with everything John says. Yeah, we're very close. We've learned a lot from each other. It's beyond friendship. <laughs> Dockers and us are the same, we're both exploited by the same system, if you like, the same structures of power. You know, we're concerned with car, we're concerned with environmental issues, but they're not separate from social issues. If we join together, we'll be much stronger. As they passed the entrance to Downing Street, someone threw a smoke bomb over the gates. The police line was pushed back for a short time, but reinforcements were soon brought in. The crowd was divided up as officers succeeded in dispersing them along Whitehall. The whole episode lasted around 20 minutes. say that you know direct action shutting off the streets to traffic etc 
that that's really not a sort of democratic way to go on. What would you say to that? Well, I don't agree with democracy anyway, because democracy is about handing over your power to other people. It's still about a minority of people controlling the lives of everyone. Direct action is really simple. It just means taking control of your life, taking your freedom, which comes with your responsibility and your self-awareness and your awareness of your impact upon other human beings. Yeah, yeah, stumbled into this. That's it. I saw all the police there. That's what made me wonder. What, why all the police like that? Then there's no nothing going on much, is there really? Riot police clashed with protesters outside Downing Street today when a march through London turned violent. At least four officers were injured as they were pelted with bottles, cans and pieces of wood. Meanwhile, thousands of Reclaim the Streets demonstrators took over Trafalgar Square and in scenes unprecedented in the capital, used it for a massive party. The police could only stand by and watch. While these people did no more than dance outside the National Gallery, others yards away were confronting police in riot gear. in the last half an hour is a very, very slow, patient and controlled dispersal of the crowd. I was sick, I wasn't, I didn't get, I wasn't sitting on the floor, I got pushed down the ground by the coppers on the floor, right, you got that? And the coppers just whacked me on the head when I was trying to get up and I was being really peaceful. Now, has anybody got the like <laughs> Police are now standing back to allow the demonstrators, most of whom were non-violent, to disperse. A huge contingent of officers saw the remaining demonstrators down streets leading from the square. On the day after the march, every newspaper referred to reclaim the streets with the phrase militant environmental activists, suggesting that it was they who had been responsible for instigating a riot. Now this phrase appeared in so many different broadcast and print media articles simultaneously that it meant that someone, somewhere, was peddling the phrase. I wasn't surprised, but I was shocked at the scale at which they did it. Um, I mean, you've got to expect that from the press and the media in this country in general. They don't give a shit about real issues. And that's what it was about. It was about real issues. So they've done their best to close it down. A defendant was arrested for assault on police. And he was actually, there was a short sequence on video showing that he was being assaulted by a senior police officer. And in court, the senior police officer actually said that uh, he had stepped over and intervened because he thought the crowd were going to take control. He is ended, ended up on video punching the defendant in the head. As far as they're concerned, it was subversive, destroying the fabric of their precious society. Um, as far as we're concerned, we're only trying to make things better. But there's only one way, and that's to do something about it. You can't just sit around 
not doing anything about it. place a few miles from where the G8 leaders are meeting. It's then decided to move a bit further up the road. The only apparent purpose of this action is to take an extra quarter of a mile of the motorway. After a few hours, riot police move in. They were met with bottles and vegetables. This legally justified the use of violence by the police. There were police injured by a few people in the crowd, participants injured by flying bottles, and participants injured and arrested by the police. That night, the world's political leaders went home in comfort. Corporate capitalism was to thrive, at least until the next spring, the last of the century. started as a peaceful protest, etc. Thank you. 
Information from all the parties across the world is coordinated and controlled by a London website that, although excellent at providing images, gave very little factual information. With all that violence, Rupert, have any people been hurt? Well, I got first. van reversed into the crowd, yeah. a woman fell underneath the van, they just, they just didn't the stop, they just over. carried on, and everyone banged on the window shouting, stop, stop. It had become easy to foresee much of what would happen, but it is more difficult to know to whose benefit. There were over 50 people injured including a policewoman dragged off her horse. Most of those hurt were not part of the skirmishes and are unlikely to come back to an event labelled as direct action. A police report eventually blamed the force for not being hard enough and asked for laws allowing for the control and surveillance of internet communications. They also warned that unless there was a way to stop this new type of violent protest, peaceful demonstrators and members of the public would get hurt. For the majority of British people, Reclaim the Streets is loosely associated with riot and thoughtless extremism, for which expensive protection is needed. Throughout history, when civil disobedience movements with radical aims have become close to being massive, affecting most parts of the population, they are tempted into spectacular violence. And if they fall into that trap, they are quickly defeated, divided and destroyed. A movement that allows itself to become inaccessible to the millions whose political opinions are shaped by corporate media and daily submission to the system is condemned to remain a counterproductive symbol, an appendix of the state and a spectacular substitute for creative rebellion. If you're living in a system that's shit and um, you can provide even temporary moments of possible futures or possible different ways of doing things, then that's great. I don't care if it's only temporary, it's better than nothing. And also, the memory of that loss, doesn't it? Everyone who saw it, everyone who was part of it, that stays with them, and the, you know, the awareness that it's possible to do something different. Because really, there isn't much more to RTS than the street parties, which just give people a glimpse of, of how things could be and they keep that with them in the rest of their lives that things could be different and it's worth struggling for something different because they've seen it, you know, for however short a time. All that is left is a single question. At which trade do we stop?